Hello and welcome to Console Cowboys. So in this video, we're gonna continue where we left off, learning about reverse engineering with R2, but we're gonna look at the UI for it, Cutter, in this video, and how to utilize that in our reverse engineering workflow. So you'll see here I have Cutter 2.0.5 x64 app image. I grabbed that from the official website, cutter.re. There's a download link for your operating system. And if you click the source, it will show you how to install it. Really all you do is download it and run a chmod plus x and you're good to go. Um, it's nice to use the app image because it comes with some niceties like Ghidra decompiler already in there. If you do it from source, you gotta add the plugins by yourself. So once you install that, you can just execute it real easy like any other Linux operating system program. Let's do a dot slash cutter and it will take a minute for that to load up. And you'll see here the screen, right? So you'd say select and then select whatever binary you're opening. I already opened it, so it pre-populates here for me, which is nice. And this is the a.out file we were using last time. So I can just double click that. And here in the load options, there's a couple things to note. One, by default, we're using this AAA, which is the auto analyze, which is what we used on the command line. You can also um, up that to the experimental four A's or hit advanced and then select other things you wanna analyze. It's up to you. I'm just gonna use the AAA on this. You can also open this with uh, write mode if you're gonna do some changing of the assembly and you wanna save it. We're just gonna hit OK and open this up and then take a look at the UI. So the UI is pretty simple, but I like it because it has a lot of functionality as well. The first thing to take note is it has all these tabs at the bottom and they're highlighting as I go over them. So we have the dashboard to start. So in this dashboard section, we can get a lot of useful information such as the architecture, the language it was written in, the hashes if we're searching this for malware analysis purposes, um, the entropy. So there's a lot of just, you know, standard stuff in here. Um, you know, the Indianness. So we have LE for little Indian. So that's also very, very useful. Next up, we have the strings. So these are all the strings within the application. So we can also filter these here. We'd say granted if we were looking for that access granted string we saw before. And it auto does that. Um, over here, there's some more information. So we were searching all sections, but you can search a specific section as well. We also have the imports here, which is useful to see what this application does based on what it's importing. For example, we know that there's a string compare in here. We know that it's outputting some data. But if this is a more involved program, doing some encryption, we might see encryption libraries imported, etc. So very good section to check out, see what's going on. There's also some search functionality. So we can search for ASM code, strings, hex strings. Um, in different sections. So if we say all mapped sections and we search for a string, we can search for granted. And this will probably fail because it's case sensitive. So we're gonna need to put that as a capital G. So just something to note. And then we found our string here. We also have our disassembly view, which is all the disassembly in the program when we're doing some reverse engineering. There is a graph version of that. Now, if nothing populates in the graph version, it's because you need to click a specific function in here. So within the main function, we see, okay, it gets to the end, there's a jump, and it can go two different ways. So this is very good for visualizing the code flow as you're going through the reverse engineering process. We can switch between disassembly and graph mode, just like Ida Pro using the space bar. So that's actually a quick hotkey for you. We have the hex dump up next, and this will give you the hex dump of the current function that we're in. Now, one thing I like to do sometimes when I'm doing some uh, debugging is grab this, and you can move these around and put this under here, and then when all the um, other things populate here, such as the registers, you'll have the hex dump that you can you know, follow on hex dump, and it's right here. Now, to put that back, I'm not 100% sure how to do that, but you can just hit X, and if you go to the windows up here and say add hex dump, it'll add it right down in these tabs and you can just uh, drag this wherever you want. So if we put it right after the graph mode again, it's back to normal. So that's pretty awesome. 
Also within this app image version, you automatically get a decompiler installed, right? So if we go to the main function, we will see Ghidra here, right? By default, we have Ghidra and we also have JS deck. So these are the two different versions of decompiled code. I like Ghidra. It looks a little bit more like C, so it's easy to follow, um, right? We have our F gets, we have our check password, and we have our if statement, so you can follow the flow of the program pretty easily. And as you click these, you'll hop into different parts and it will be decompiled. So that's actually really, really nice. Um, and you could say, compare these back and forth, like here's our check password, here's the C code. So if we were looking at the disassembly and we were trying to figure out, you know, map the disassembly to the uh, decompiled code to learn uh, assembly a little better, we can just kind of hop back and forth between uh, the decompiler, maybe drag it over here, look at some code, look at the decompiled version, compare it and kind of figure out how assembly maps to C or if we're doing reverse engineering, it's good to hop back and forth as well. Um, we also can do some interesting things. So for example, if we were searching in those strings again for that granted, right? So here's our granted here. We could say X for X reference, or you can right click and also get the X reference. So it's here and we say show X refs. Within the results of the X reference, we'll see a code preview of what code is there and what called it. We can double click that and it'll go right to the code. So this is the result function where we get access granted. Now, if we wanted to find out who called that and where it comes from, we could hit X on that. And then it shows us the code there. So call result. So this call result is right down into here. So here's the result call. Now we're in the check password function. We can do the same thing again, hit X, see where that's called double click on that and we see we're back in the main function. You'll find that this functionality is really useful for figuring out the flow of the program. For example, if you had a vulnerable function somewhere in the program and you were trying to see if the data coming in there traces back to user input where you can get user input into that vulnerable function and then exploit that, you could then from that vulnerable function trace back all the way back up to the main and see where that data is coming from, stuff like that, or just in general, figuring out what gets called from something you're trying to reverse engineer. Another very useful thing is renaming things. So for example, if we were to hop in this check password, it's sending this S right here. So similar to the Ghidra workflow where you rename things to get more context on how the C code works, we could say this argument here, hit N, and change that arg to user password. And then what you'll see is it changes throughout, right? So as we go down to this string compare, we're comparing the user password with S1. I can hit the escape to go back because I accidentally clicked that. So this S1 here, we can change that up here to be something else by hitting and again, and we can say real password. And now once that's changed, if you look at the string compare, you'll say, oh, okay, yeah, the string compare is containing a reference to the real password with the user supplied password, and it's just a little more clear. Now you can't change everything in here. If I try to change the IVAR variable, I'll get an error saying only local variables. Um, but you'll also notice too, when you highlight these, it shows you all the different places in the code where it exists. So that's also useful. If we were scrolling down a big piece of code here and we had that highlighted, we'd see if it was used down here again. So all very, very useful. I'll just show a couple more things before I close out this video. One is there's the right click menu and there's various things in there. So if I right click here, you know, you can rename the variable. I can set a breakpoint. If I'm in the disassembly view or the graph view here, I could say right click this check password, grab the address, and if I was in another function, for example, main, um, I can copy that in there, hit enter, and I'll hop right into wherever that address is and I can navigate around that way, so that's also very useful. Another thing you can do is add comments into your code. For example, um, whether I was in decompiler view or a graph view, I could click somewhere in here, hit the semicolon and say, this 
is the check password function. So maybe I analyzed some code. I figured out what it was doing. It was doing some really advanced encryption process and I figured it out. I could write in here what that is as a note to myself. Now in the decompiler view, you won't actually see that comment, but if I hop over to this graph view over here, I say this is the check password function. So that's also very, very useful. I think that's enough new information in this video. So if you learn something, like and subscribe. And in the next video, we'll take a look at the debugging within Cutter. Thanks for watching.